there's a girl over here that just came into the game. She don't know nothing. She's scared. And she got this tight pussy. And she got these perky tits. And and she's trying to figure this out for the first time. And she and and, and your man come around and be like, baby, I got some money for you. Can you give me an experience that I ain't never had? He still loves you though. He appreciates you though. He gonna give you the house, the car, the credit. But he just he just a man. He just a man. All right, Diamond. Oh wait, I ain't even ready. I got the cup on. Don't drink it up. Okay, like I got a little bit of shit. What are you drinking? Um, well, I decided to try dark liquor because white liquor, I don't know, it's a bit not been agreeing with my stomach. So I'm trying do say with you, do, do you drink pretty much every time you go to work? Oh, I have to. You have to. I have to because if I don't drink, I'm in there like. But it's like, how do I talk to people? How do I interact? How do I do this? Because this is all new for me. Um, how long have you been doing this? It's going on three years and three years. So fairly new for you. It's a little different for me. My story is a lot different. How, how'd you get into it? <laughs> I had to survive, baby. <laughs> that's, I had to survive. that's a common story. I had to survive. And let me take this last week and we're going to get into it. You meet a guy for the first time. Okay, yeah, he's cool. He got money. I don't care about that. Me, you have to dismiss certain things when it comes to a man. You have to dismiss it. Like what? Oh, okay, he got a big chain. Boom. He got a big rack. Brr. He's gonna come in talking about some, baby, I got all these racks. I can give you this, I can give you that, I can put you on. I'll be like, oh, okay, babe, that's cool, that's nice. Okay, great, okay. I can give you 1500 for the night. Pop it open. Let me see you. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me. Okay. You about to? Okay, babe. All right. I'm down. I'm cool. Nigga take off his drawers. Can I curse? Of course. Oh, because I didn't know. Because you know, you two be weird, real weird. No, say what you want. No. Okay. You, you do it how you want. You the, you the, you the Hollywood man. But nigga want to pop it up. Talking about some... And men, all the time, the minute you start trying to fuck me raw, I devalue you. I devalue you. Because I'm going to stop you and say, oh, no, baby, let's use protection. And I don't care how drunk I am. One thing I'm going to make sure, I'm about my bread and I'm about my protection. But I really should say it this. I'm about my protection first. I'm about my protection first. It's about me. Because this is the money. So I gotta protect it everywhere possible. I don't give a fuck if I know you for three years. We're using a condom every fucking time. Because the same way a guy has eyes for me, he has eyes for the next, the next, the next. And all the nexes that he done collected, he finna put inside of me. And I don't wanna risk that. I ain't been out here like that, but I've never had an STD. Good for you. I've never had an STD, but I will say this. There's been times I've been running to a clinic like, please, God, help me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Please help me. Help me. Please. I don't know. And I don't threw all my money down. Terrible, terrible stress. And I'll talk about that later. I don't talked about it before, but if I've been spared this long, I got to protect it because I made a promise to God that was like, please, God, if you protect me this one time, I ain't never gonna fuck up. I ain't never gonna fuck up. And it's the most realest shit that I have. And that's why every time I'm like, oh no, baby, you gotta wear a condom. And then niggas, men, they be like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm gonna wear a condom. And you gotta pick up on certain things like, Okay, 
This is how they love to get you from the back. From the back, this is how niggas love to get you because that's how the nigga has tried to get me. Not once, but twice. The first time they really got me, that's how I learned my lesson. They was like, okay, let me get it from the back. Okay, cool. But then I hear, <laughs> and that's them taking off the condom. And me, I don't care. I don't drink that much, but I drink enough to know my limit where it's like, I still have my senses. You gotta still have your senses in this game. And I'll talk about this a little later. You gotta have your senses in this game. It was like, <laughs> and I looked down, I said, baby, I see the tip of your dick, what's up? And you start acting up. And a dude who's rock hard, he ain't gonna jeopardize leaving on blue balls. And that's how you got him. That's how you got him. Because you gotta play that game the same way they're trying to do you. These niggas, I don't care. These men, I don't care how clean, how smell good they is, how rich they got it, how big of a chain. If they dirty, that shit don't mean nothing. If they dirty, that shit don't mean nothing. You cannot let no man put no disease on you. Because if this is your money, you should do everything possible to protect that. You should. Because if you got herpes, how you gonna fuck the next nigga who gonna offer you 10 bands to fuck raw? He ain't gonna wanna fuck with you after you give him that disease. He ain't gonna fuck with you. Cause me, I ain't never had no STD, not in my past life, before I was a dancer, and not even as I'm a dancer. The only thing, if you bitches or you niggas out here really want to know, a yeast infection, but any girl can get that just by <coughs> coughing. Any girl can get that. But if this is your money, if your body is your money, then you should protect that like... This is a house. This is equity. You should treat your pussy like it's credit. Because if it's credit and it can make you more money, why are you going to risk it for a nigga who dirty who want to fuck 10 bitches? And he don't know. Because men, they don't care. You'd be surprised how many men have tried to turn me over and said, baby, bust it open. And they're not coming at me with no condom. I'm the one with the condom. I know what I can use. Latex, baby, I can't use that. That's going to give me a yeast infection. I don't play with that shit. It's going to hurt me. You got to do what's best for you. If a guy comes at you with money or he makes it clear that he has money. Oh, okay. That's cool. That's fine. No, no, because I'm not talking about safe sex anymore. I'm talking about just a, a guy in your life, romantically, mm -hmm. personally. If a guy has money, does that mean something to you or, or is it usually trouble? It don't mean nothing to me. Because me, already in the mode, this is how I am. Oh, you got money? Okay, cool. That's fine. All right, babe. I would like this. I would like that. All right, cool. That's great. That's fine. That's cool. That's fine. All right, great. That's all cool. That's all fine. But me in the background, in my head, this is how I am. All right. How low does this guy go? What's his problem? What is his fix? Is he a pill head? Does he like drugs? Is he a drug addict? Is he an alcoholic? What's his problem? How can I protect myself so I don't get too fucked up in what the fuck he got going on? And this is where I start going like, okay, if he cool, I gotta play the game, but not be so close to him. Because at the end of the day, you met me in the strip club. I know you tricking. But I don't know how bad you tricking. I don't know if you fucking 10 holes raw and you trying to fuck with me. I can't be the one. If you fuck 10 holes raw, I got to be the safe one. I got to be the smart one. I got to be the one that uses the game good enough so I can excel higher. Because I can't drag you. I can't drag myself down with you with the fuck what you doing. And that's just what it is. So you got to use that for what it is, but you got to be smart. You got to protect your prize. You got to protect your heart, your mental. Yeah, you could get your heart broke. Fuck it. Oh, well, in 30 days, 
you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna meet somebody else and you're gonna forget about the old one. But let's say you fuck this one and you got sick. Yeah, you take some antibiotics, but you always gonna have that, oh I was sick. You're gonna have that stain on you. When, and you when, don't want when, that. When was the last time you were in love? Oh, the last time I was love? Oh, probably not sixty days ago. Today today's Friday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It worked like that. That's how it be. That's how it be. Well, I can't even say 60 days ago. Like, 90 days. 90 days. Yeah. 90 days. This is the guy you met in the club? Exactly. I met him in the club. I met him. Uh, do, you, do you meet guys outside of the club ever? Um, or are you working so much there? I would say just recently because there's a way to do that. So you don't have to be in the club as often. You can meet guys outside the club just by being a presentable woman. And being by a presentable, beautiful woman. Sorry, I'm trying to make this very PG as possible yeah. for the rated R <laughs> mental that's out there. You'll get demonetized. Don't worry about you get demonetized. Oh, I don't want you to get demonetized. I get Jake. demonetized all the time. It's okay. Fuck it, man. This is real talk. YouTube cannot censor the real life. But um, no, let me finish this. What was your childhood like? You had both mom and dad. Um, my childhood. I don't know how to explain my childhood other than that I was sheltered, but between, I guess, from the time that I was born. All the way up until I was 24, I dealt with abuse. And the type of abuse that I dealt with was a lot of verbal abuse from my father, um, sheltering. I grew up as Jehovah Witness, so it was a lot of sheltering, a lot of different things that I didn't understand at the time. And it was very different. My father, it wasn't until the, like, years later as I got older I realized that he suffered from a mental illness that kind of was the reason why he was the way he was. My mom, she came from Haiti. And not to really develop her situation because she told me never to speak about it, but when you're coming to this country for the first time, you don't have any papers, you don't have any means of making any money, you have to do what this person says to do. And as quickly as she came here, she became pregnant with my sister. And two years later, she became pregnant with me. And after she became pregnant with me, that's when things started to change and she had to move in the direction that her life was changing. Um, and that's kind of where it come from there. How was your dad mentally ill in your opinion um i want to say that now as i've gotten older and i'm 30 now i believe he suffered from a type of schizophrenia um my family and even in my culture mental illness is not something that is acknowledged mental illness is something seen as it's a spirit, it's a voodoo, it's a, something that someone cursed you with. It's a magical, mythical thing. And that's just from the background. But being in America, it's like, hey, there's medication, there's therapy, there's treatment for it. And as I've gotten older, I understand that. And I've accepted that. Do I love my father? No. Do I want to rekindle a relationship with him? No, it's just, I've accepted it and it is what it is. If I swear to see my father like right there, I wouldn't feel any kind of way because I've made so much peace with that. It's like, I don't know him anymore. He's, he made me and thank God that I'm here so I can be somebody for my mom because my mom is present. I had to make peace with the decisions that my mom has made because she put up with a lot of shit that my dad had did that she should have stood up for me and been like, hey, this isn't right. You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't be X, Y, and Z. And I had to make peace with that. I had to forgive my mom. And we have a stronger relationship now because it's like, it's not your fault. You came here, you didn't know any English. 
You didn't know anybody. You didn't have any family. Nobody. It was just you. And you had to do the best you could to survive. And that's the mentality I always have. You have to survive. You have to do what you can to survive. Because nobody is going to do this shit for you. And she had to do it. She had one and then two kids. And that's it. So the, the abuse from your dad was mostly verbal, not, not sexual? Very verbally abusive. Very controlling, verbally abusive. My dad, he was verbally abusive. The first abuse started with, not only was it started with my mom. It started with my mom because that's all she had at the time. She didn't have any kids. The verbal abuse started with my mom. Very blurry abuses. And she had to take it because she's in a country that she doesn't know anybody. She doesn't have any family. And this is the only person that she can rely on. She came here illegally. You can cut that part out. I don't, I don't, I don't want to dispel her information. But she came here and my dad was all she had. This one person that she relied on for money, for guidance in the United she, States. She needed that relationship. She needed that relationship. She had to do what she had to do to keep it going. So, you know, she made right. She got pregnant with my sister. My dad was upset that it was a girl, but she still kept that relationship going. She put up with the abuse. She put up with the verbal abuse. It wasn't physical, but it was mostly, she doesn't know anything. She doesn't know America. She doesn't know America. She doesn't speak English. She's relying on this one person. And coming to America was a big deal. It was a big deal. And especially, not to fully speak about it, but the way that she came here, she could have died. She could have died. And she didn't want to go back to that. And she knew that being out here, she didn't want to go back to Haiti. She didn't want to go back to that life. She didn't want to go back to what she, she grew up in. Have you been to Haiti? Yes, I've been to Haiti a few times. What do you think of it? Oh, I'm not one of those spoiled Haitians, regardless of the light skinness, because there's a stigma that you're light skinned, that you're you're up here, you're great, you're you're fondly looked upon. Oh no, all I know in Haiti is the bottom. All I know is Haiti. All I've ever seen in Haiti was the bottom. People with their belly buttons out. No clothes, no shoes, living by the beach, washing themselves with salt water, mothers struggling, making mud pies. That's all I know. That's all I've ever seen Haiti. I don't know this nice side of Haiti that people keep talking about and vacationing to. I don't know that side. I've never seen it. I wish I had, but I've never seen it. I don't know this side. So you're, so you're happy to be in America? Oh, yeah, I'm happy to be in America. And I'm like, damn, I wish I would have been somebody. I could have been a, well, and in, in, when you're being Haitian, you're supposed to be like a nurse, a doctor, a lawyer, something up there. I ain't been none of that shit. Child, I'm a stripper. Oh, I ain't, <laughs> I'm trying to make this, I'm trying to make this life so I'm a little piece. But it's like me seeing Haiti, I never, I know there's a nice side. I know there is, but I've never seen it. I've never seen it. And it just has to do with the way my family came from because we didn't grow up with that nice side. I don't know what it's like to see a mansion in Haiti with running water. All I know was the well. Yeah. Are you, are you, so would you describe yourself as a happy person? Oh, you, yeah. You're grateful? You're happy? You're... I'm grateful. I'm happy. I try to be as positive. Life hasn't always been super easy. I would say from the time I was born till about the age of 27, I've really had to deal with abuse. And it's not so much punching, hitting. Abuse comes in all forms. And it wasn't until I got a little older, someone explained it to me that was like, that's abuse, that's abuse. I'm like, really? I was abused? I didn't know. I didn't know. Because it was just like, dang, I know life sucks, but I didn't know it sucked this bad. And I felt like, oh, but other people have it worse than me. But verbal abuse, control, trauma, all that stuff, it is abuse. I still, even till this day, don't even try to acknowledge it. I just, 
have accepted it and moved on because what I want in my life is to be happy, to be positive. If it can help somebody, you know, understand, understand, like, hey, this was abuse. This, this ain't something you should deal with. And cool, then that's fine. But even until this day, I still have, I still have like a hard time accepting that this was abuse that I've went through. Mm-hmm. And I've went through it not only between my family, between religion, and then a relationship. It's like, it's hard. It's like, dang, I've been abused for over 10 years of my life. Do you have kids? No. No kids? You've been married? No. You've been in love, though? Hmm? You've been, you had a long relationship at some point? Yeah, I had a long relationship, but left it about four years. And that was abusive, too, as well. Hmm. So it's like, right after I got out of my parents' house, which was abusive, I looked at this man and was like, oh, you're finally my savior. And I, the, well, I didn't know it was like a worse mistake, but I moved in to his place and was like, okay, you're gonna now be my protector. You're gonna now be my savior. And we're gonna work together and build something that's gonna be great. It's gonna be better. It's gonna be something that different from what I'm used to. But now you're my abuser. You're verbally abusing me. And you're verbally abusing me because you're addicted to alcohol. You're, I can't even call weed a drug even to this day, but it's like you have to smoke and drink every night. And when you drink, cause that's the more higher, I guess the higher drug, you're taking it out on me. You're being verbally abusive to me and the last kind of year of the relationship, it became, I became more distant. I became more reserved. I became more trying to put my foot down. And his advances towards me became, okay, you're withholding from me, so I'm going to force myself on you. It is what it is, and I just knew I had to get out of it. And... I had to plot my escape out of it. Is that where stripping kind of came into the picture to, to survive? That's where that's where it started. Tell me, tell me about stripping. Tell me about working in a strip club. Tell, what was it like? What do you want to know about working in the strip club? You tell me, baby, because I got a whole story for you, baby. Where do we start? What about the guys? What what what, what a girl girlfriends and wives? need to know about their partners when they go to strip clubs? First of all, you can't be slacking. There's no baby mama. There's no girlfriend. There's no none of that shit. I'm sorry, baby. But you got to understand, your man is a man. And men have needs. Even though he fuck with you, it ain't enough. You got loose skin. Your titties is down here. Yo, your pussy ain't that tight. Listen, your pussy ain't that fucking tight. It ain't that fucking tight. Niggas is tired. You know, it's, and niggas be sitting here like, damn, I'm trying to be faithful. She had my soul. That nigga key. Man, fuck all that bullshit. Your pussy loose. Your skin loose. Fuck it. He going to the strip club. He going to look for bitches that are... They on that... Fuck shit. They looking for hoes. They looking for bitches that do all kind of weird shit. This nigga want fingers... He want to stick his fingers here. He want to stick his dick here. He want to do all kind of freaky shit. That's what your husband want to do. And you're not giving it to him. And you can't. You got this, this, this flappy whatever the, the hell that doctor gave you. You got too many scars up, up in here. You got too many. And that's not to devalue you as a woman. But it's like, baby, this is what you have. There's a girl over here that just came into the game. She don't know nothing. She's scared. 
and she got this tight pussy and she got these perky tits and and she's trying to figure this out for the first time and she and and, and your man come around and be like baby i got some money for you can you give me an experience that i ain't never had he still love you though he appreciates you though he gonna give you the house the car the credit but he just he just a man he just a man and he have needs that need to be experienced, even if it's just for one night. One night, just one night, baby. And he gonna make this girl, whether it be for $500 or $1,000 or 10K, he just wanna experience something different than what you can offer him. It doesn't devalue you as a woman, but it's like, damn, this man, just want to have a different kind of time than what you can offer him at that moment. And that's it. It's nothing more. It's nothing less. It's just for one night. And that's all you got to understand. It's just for one night. Just for one night. And he going to give it to this girl. He going to let her do what she got to do. He going to feel how he going to feel. He gonna feel good. He gonna be like, oh, damn, I done did this. He gonna brag to his homeboy. He gonna grab to, he gonna brag to his homies in jail doing 20 years. So uh, oh, tell, tell me about the, the white clubs. Okay. So with the white clubs, you have to understand in the white clubs, it's more based off of conversation and emotion because these guys coming in, they got their girlfriends bitching at them. They got their wives bitching at them. They used to seeing loose skin, attitude. <sighs> all ah, oh, kind of whatever irritant whatever makes a man mad you know <laughs> that's what they used to seeing but when they come into the white club they're looking for a hey how's it going baby my name is Simon seem a little stress. What can I do to make your night better? I know that you're tired. I know that you're stressed. But I want to make that night better for you. Uh, would you like me? Would you like me sloppy? Or would you like me to keep it cute? You tell me, baby. I'm here for you. I'm here for you, baby. I want to make tonight good for you. That's okay. What for you is just about? What's all you stress about, babe? Don't be shy with me. I'm here for you. You just let me know what your fantasy is about. Cause you never know. I can make it all happen. Better tell me, baby. Just tell me, baby. <laughs> Do you like it? <laughs> <laughs>
God. But that's how it be because I notice more in, we're just going to say Caucasian club. It's more of a, a need. It's, it's more of a what they're not getting at home that they can find in. Where are you working tonight? Club. The white club or the black club? Tonight? Oh, in the white club, baby. It's Friday, child. I'm trying to some money, child. I, I think I'm going to meet you there. <laughs> you better call out because rent is due. Rent is due. Rent is due. Rent is due. And then what are the black clubs like? Black club is, don't get me wrong, within the white club, during the week is very very slow so me i don't know if i got like add or something like that like <laughs> i like to be stimulated in my head in the white club during the week you can find a good trick and what i mean by trick which is a nigga you don't have to say uh, a man can i curse sure you a man you don't have to say too much to you you, to, you got demonetized in the first minute so i don't think oh <laughs> baby you can let me know because i'll keep it real real but like in the first you know in the first couple conversation you know you have to understand men they want different things but you have to also remember what you want out of these men because a man that came into my life I never, women, okay, women in the black club, we very bougie. We very bougie. Oh, he don't look like he gonna spend a hundred dollars. We ain't finna talk to him. <laughs> and I know I'm being real dramatic, but this is what the mental is. This is what the mental is. But that man that you don't, And I know I'm being over dramatic, but that's how I have to be. Because some of you girls out there don't fucking know. That same man that you. <laughs> that man, because this is what happened to me. Baby, look at me. Bring that camera close because that's what I want to know. That same man, that same man, that same man. Oh, baby. Oh, that same man when I got him. That same man when I got him. He done gave me a whole 10 bands. 10 bands. And for the people that who don't understand what 10 bands is, it's 10,000. Cold dollars cash. And he done changed my whole fucking life. My whole fucking life. Because what you don't see is, because as good as I look, as nice as these things are, as good as this butt is, as soft as it is, as soft as it is, is, Baby, come here. Come here real close. Because I want motherfuckers to understand. A bitch was struggling, living in the projects, and I looked as good as it looked. But until I started using that game that it was meant for, that's when I started coming up. So unless you finna do the same, then bitch, you just struggling like the rest of these bitches. So people can call it tricking, fucking for money, this, that, and the third. But at the end of the damn day, if you got a note on your door saying that <laughs> if you don't pay this damn rent within 30 days, then what the fuck you got? What the fuck you got? You got to start using the game for what you need. And it just is what it is. It just is what it is. 
Take it how you want. It don't work the same way for every girl. But I'm just telling you that if you have a goal in mind, if you see yourself more than just the club, you got to start manifesting what you want. If you see yourself, I don't know, in the business, in the meetings with the millions for properties, for, I don't know, let's say you want to do jewelry, then you got to finesse for that. What you over here with these bags and shoes for? That shit ain't going to get you nowhere. You got to get in these meetings. You got to understand what this game can get you. Because these niggas is dumb as fuck. These niggas is dumb as fuck. But they're not too dumb. They'll let you know enough to eat with them. But you got to do enough so you can sit with them and be a boss. And any real bitch who understand what the fuck I'm saying, you gonna make sure that you be a boss. Any bitch who really about that life, you gonna be a boss. You gonna be a boss. It ain't about fucking for bags and shoes and vacation. Vacations is nothing more than an Instagram picture. Ain't nothing more just for clout. I don't care about no clout. You can make clout at any point in time. You got to make something that you can eat. Your kids can eat. Your mom can eat. And after your mom pass away, that your grandkids can eat. You can eat. You got to eat long term. You got to have that money that can do something for you today, tomorrow, for your grandkids, for your ancestors, for this, that, and the third, you gotta make a legacy. You gotta hold stuff, you gotta own stuff. You gotta own shit. I don't own stuff at one point in my life. People always ask me, oh, Diamond, how you got your body done? How you got your body done? The real shit that's gonna take you somewhere? You wanna get a body like this? Baby, you got to invest in real estate. This body, this titty, this ass came from real estate. Real estate. Can you say it with me? Real estate. That means investing in a property that you might not see. It might be a short-term lease. Short-term. But if you stay in there a year and you make the right investment... When it's time for you to sell that bitch, you'd be surprised how much the money you get back. And you'd be like, damn. This is the thing that I always go back and forth with. I still have a, like a complex. Was it worth the abuse to look like this? Or... Could I have made it a different way? Because that's the track that I'm on. I got to make it a different way. I don't want to deal with the abuse. I don't want to deal with being yelled at. I don't want to be deal with getting raped. I don't want to deal with getting talked down as a woman. I want to be seen as, damn, she's strong. She have knowledge. She knows what she's doing. She, she not going to fall for the little stuff. I want to... I want people to respect that damn, yeah, she been through some stuff, but she know better now versus back then, which was like, yeah, you got raped for this. Yeah, you got yelled at for this. Yeah, you you lay down for this because all that shit led me to where I'm in today. So some of the girls coming up, you got to ask yourself, can you do the same thing? And you can't. You can't deal with a man yelling at you when you're drunk. You can't deal with a man yelling at you when you have no money in your bank account. You can't even make it to work with no money. Your car, when you swipe to get gas to get to where you fucking get into, is saying decline, insufficient funds. And you don't got nothing to do. 
You don't have no shit to do. Do you take your chances on that less than half a tank to drive an hour way to your job? Or do you go back home? What the fuck do you do? And when you quit that man and say, fuck all this shit, you're like, okay, I'm going to go throw my ass in the club and see what it do. And when you first do what it do, you don't make the money. You don't make the money that you're making. You don't make the money because you don't know the game. You don't know the people. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. you just out here like, oh, I'll just wait and see. you waiting in the back. But you waiting in the back so you can study the game and understand, okay, this is who I get to. This is who I get to. This is who I get to. And that's the way the game is. So how, how does this work affect you emotionally? Emotionally, um, I ain't never gonna lie. It, it do give me anxiety. It make me hard to trust people. You get depressed? I be feeling like, yeah, I be getting depressed, but it made me like on some flip shit. Like, okay, what this person want? Do they, do they want to try alcohol. to trick me? Alcohol is how you deal with that? Yeah, alcohol is how to deal with it because it's like, I got to suppress that thinking because if I don't think like that, if I don't have the alcohol in me, it don't make me like cool, sedated, calm down. Because if I don't have the alcohol, I just be in there with a mean face like, Okay, what the fuck this person want? Oh, okay, they tell me this, 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 that. Because I always be thinking like, how they finna get me? How they finna run down on me? The, the alcohol loosens you up, opens you up? Yeah, it opens me up enough to be flirtatious, mm -hmm. sexual, um, more flirtatious to an extent. But if I don't have that alcohol in me, I'm just very frigid, very cold, and I'm really, really myself. <laughs> and the way that I'm really myself is just like, That's how I am. Yeah. I'm very frigid. I'm very cold because I can't be as open and loose that I need to be. And when you're a dancer, you have to be flirtatious, very sexual, very like very enticing. Like, hey, I'm cool. I'm good for a downtime. And you have to look like you play that sexual part. And I can't play that part unless I have liquor. I can't play that part unless I have liquor. And I'm... I, I'm not sorry to nobody. What the fuck y'all owe me? What the fuck y'all owe me? Nothing but some money. And that's the way that it is that it is. But I have to drink in order to suppress that. And I have to control it. And I hope people understand that you have to have a balance in this game. You have to have a balance. Because if you don't have a balance, you're going to fall for anything. Because motherfuckers are going to try to drug me, kill me, set me up, all kind of fuck shit. And I don't have to survive that. And you don't have to have that shit with you. And you have to. You have to. It's the game. But that's the way that I have to be. You have to be a little flirtatious so you can make your money. You don't have to be a little, you know, a little open, you know, a little, a little sexual. And that's just the way it is for the game, for your job, to make the money. But anything outside of that, psh, fuck that. Talk, nigga talking about come with me here, this, that, and the third. Ain't none of that. Ain't none of that. All right. Unless you got that piece with you. All right, Diamond. Thank you so much for an interesting talk. Thank you. You're fascinating. Thank you. We're going to have to do a part two one day. Hopefully. <laughs> All Hopefully. Right, Thank you. Thank you.